Hello everyone. Welcome to today's sections. My name is Ko Chen Li. Today, we are going to show you PHP web-based programming language, cookies, sections, browsers, and more. And each cookies could only be read, read by the website that had written it, meaning that it was a secure way to store information across pages. And sections grew up from cookies as a way of storing data on the server side. Because the inherent problems of storing anything sensitive on client machines is that they are able to tamper with it if they wished. In order to set up a unique identifiers on the client, sections still use a small cookie. And this cookie simply holds a value that uniquely identifies the client to use the server and corresponds to a data file on the server. So we will first talk about how to use PHP to handle cookies. Topics covered in these sections are how cookies and sections compare, which to use or when to use, how to use sections how to use a database to store your sections, how to detect your browser's types, and how to validate your data. And HTTP is stateless. That is, any data you have stored is forgotten about when the page has been sent to the client and the connection is closed. It took a little work to find a solution to the problem. Eventually, Netscap put the solutions into their browser known as cookies. Tiny bits of information that the website could store on the client's machines they were sent back to the website, and each time a new page was requested. To set a cookie, just use PHP function setCookie. Passing it the name of the cookie and the test you want to store in the cookie. Taking the example of sorting a message board index, a cookie would need to be placed that holds the user's pr preference on message sorting. Whether they want it newest first, oldest first, or sorted alphabetically. Take a look at the piece of code. The script can be split up into two distinct parts. First, we check whether a cookie is set. And if not, we use the setCookie function to set it. Then we output a form allowing visitors to select how they like their ordering set. The set cookie call needs to be before the HTML form because of the way the web works. The explanation requires a little knowledge of how HTTP works. And it's quite important if you want to understand how cookie works. And HTTP operates by sending or header information before it sends body information. 
in the header, it sends things like server type, for example, a patch, page size, and other impo important data. In the body, it sends the actual HTML you see on the screen. HTTP works in such a way that header data cannot come after body data. And you must send all your header data before you send any body data at all. And cookies come into the categories of header data. When you press a cookie using set cookie, your web server adds a line in your header data for that cookie. If you try to send a cookie after you have start sending HTML, PHP will frag up serious errors and the cookies will not get placed. The set cookie functions itself takes three main parameters. The name of the cookie, the value of the cookie, and the date of date the cookies should expire. In the example code, set cookie sets a cookie called ordering to the value set in the form from the drop down select box. And it uses times plus 31 million 536,000 as its third parameters. And this is equal to the current time in seconds plus the number of seconds in a year. Which means the cookie is set to expire one year from the time it was set. And once set, the ordering cookies will be sent with every subsequent page request. The PHP will make it available in cookie. And note that users can clear their cookies manually either by using the special options in their web browsers or just by deleting files. It is also important to note that cookies are sent from your visitor to you when the page is requested. If you set the cookie during the PHP script, that is request it will not have been sent with the request. Which means it will not be in cookie. And this is what it meant by every subsequent page request. And the last three parameters of the set cookie functions allow you to restrict when it's sent. which gives you a little more control. They aren't used often, but in case you were interested, here is how they work. The path allows you to set the directory in which the cookie is active. By default, this is slash, active for the entire site but you could set it to slash message board slash to have the cookies only available in that directory and its subdirectories. And domain allows you to set the subdomains in which the cookie is active. For example, specifying mail.yoursite.com 
will make the cookie available there but not on www.yoursite.com use that your site account to make the cookie available everywhere and secure let's you specify whether the cookie uh, must only be sent through a HTTPs connections or not and the default zeros has the cookie sent across both HTTPS and HTTP but you can set it to one to force HTTPs only. And a section is a combination of a server-side file containing all the data you wish to store and a client-side cookie containing a references to the server data. The file and the client-side cookie are created using the function section start. It has no parameters, but informs the, the server that sections are going to be used. When you call section start, PHP will check to see whether the visitor sent the section cookie if it did, PHP will load the section data. Otherwise, PHP will create a new section file on the server and send an ID back to the visitor to associate the visitor with the new file. And because each visitor has their own data locked away in their unique section file, and you need to call section starts before you try to read section variables. And failing to do so will mean that you simply will not have access to layer data. And furthermore, a section start needs to send the reference cookie to the user's computer you need to have it before the body of your web page and even before any spaces and all your section data is stored in the section super global array sections which means that each section variable is one element in the array combined with its value adding variables to this array is done in the same way as adding variables to any array with the added the bonus that the sections variables will still be there when you use the browsers to another page to select section variables, use syntax like the shown in the slide. And older versions of PHP use the function section register. However, use of this function is strongly discouraged, as it will not work properly in default installations of PHP 5. If you have scripts that use section registers, you are strongly recommended to switch over to using the section super global, as it is more portable and easier to read to. Before you can add any variable to a section, you need to have already called the section start functions and note that you cannot store resources such as database connections in sections because these resources are unique 
to each PHP script. And I usually clean when the script terminates. And once you have put your data safely away, it becomes immediately available in section super global arrays. With the key of the variable name you gave it. And here is an example of setting data and reading it back out again. And unlike cookies, section data is available as soon as it is set, which can be quite an advantage. And removing a specific value from the sections is as simple as using the function onset, just as you would for any other variable. It is important that you should onset only specific elements of the section array, not the section array itself. And because that will leave you without any way to manipulate the section data at all. And the section lasts until your visitor closes their browsers. If, if they navigate away to another page, then return to your site without having closed their browsers. Their section will still exist. And this behavior is usually desirable. Potentially, your visitor's section data might last for days, as long as they keep browsing around your site, whereas cookies usually have a fixed lifespan. And if you want to implicitly end a user's and delete their data without them having to close their browser, and you need to clear the section array. Then use the section destroy function. Section destroy removes all section data stored on your hard disk, leaving you with a clean state. And to end the sections and clean up its data, use this code. And there are two important things to note there. Firstly, session start is called so that PHP loads the user sections. And secondly, we use an empty call to the array function to make section an empty array. If section start is not called, Neither of the following two lines will work properly. So again, always call section start. And different browsers have different capabilities. And you might want to determine what type of browsers the users has. And we saw how to do this in JavaScript but you can also do it in PHP. You should already know that you can use the server HTTP user agent variable to see what web browsers request a page. But how can you tell whether that browser supports the HTML iframe element? And does that browser support CHS2? And what version number is that? And while you could gain a little more information by actually parsing the user's agent, a much better solution is to let PHP do it 
for you. And this is done using the get browser functions, which when given no parameters, process the user's agent from server HTTP user agents. And you can pass it to a particular user agent to work with. Either way, it returns an object that contains information about a particular web browser, what it's capable of, what version it is, and what platform it is running on. And the functions works by looking up the user agents and its long list of browsers. And reading from letters what let browsers post, you need to download this browser list yourself. And here is an example that uses get browser functions. They will print out the long list of information made available to you. Here are some of the outputs. From that, you can see we are running IE6 on Windows XP with .NET installed. It supports CSS version 2, as well as HTML frames and iframes elements. And there are quite a few other things there, and we did not show it here. Now, just dumping out information like that is no use to anyone. What you really want to do is to actually use that information in a smart way. And for example, we could use it to load a custom CSS file for the various browsers out there. Keep in mind that each browser usually has its own way of rendering CSS style. So having different style sheets for each browser makes a lot of sense. And you can write scripting code, most commonly JavaScript. That will verify form fields containing good data before being submitted to the server. And this is often used. The advantages of using client-side validations are two-fold users receive feedback quicker. And also it saves loads on the server. And more work is done on the client-side. The disadvantage however, is big. Client science supports for scripting languages valid widely. And with some browsers, it's supporting scripts very well. Others supporting bits and pieces. And others supporting nothing at all. And furthermore, users can disable your client-side check-ins in order to feed you bad data. If you rely solely on client-side check-ins, you are bound to get hacked eventually. And server-side data validations means using PHP to verify that good values have been sent to the script. Using server-side validations has pretty much the exact opposite prompts and cons of client-side development. And it is more secure and works seamlessly with all browsers. 
but it does so at the cost of slightly higher server loads and slow feedback for user. And one big advantage to server-side validations is that you can use PHP, a language by now you have attained some skill with. And as you know, PHP has a wide variety of functions and language features to help you check strings, numbers, uh, within ranges, and so on. And furthermore, you can use PHP to connect to a database to check whether a username exists. And for example, which is uh, simply impossible using client-side scripting. And this is for today's sections. Thank you.